We touched briefly on continuous collision detection in Dynamics Basics 1, Physics Primer. In this video, we will go into more detail on how it works and how to tweak parameters to balance performance with accuracy. As discussed, rigid bodies in Havoc Physics can generate TOIs, or time of impact events, when they are integrated into or through each other during the physics step. At the end of the step, TOIs are sorted first to last, the simulation is backtracked to the earliest TOI, collision resolution occurs, and the bodies involved are reintegrated and recollided. Consider the famous Newton's Cradle. This is a performance intensive scenario for continuous physics. It's also a really good illustration of how continuous collision detection works. Here we see the problem that arises in discrete physics. At T0, the light blue sphere is on the left. At T1, the end of the physics time step, the light blue sphere is integrated through the blue and red spheres. When collision detection is performed at the end of the step, the bodies are not overlapping and no collision is registered. This is often described as the bullet through paper problem. Let's look at the same scenario with continuous collision enabled. In this case, the light blue sphere generates two TOI events as its swept transform is collided with the blue and red spheres. The earliest TOI is used to backtrack the simulation to the exact time when the light blue sphere hits the blue one. The other TOI can be discarded. This collision response is calculated, and the involved bodies are reintegrated and recollided. At which point, the blue sphere now generates a TOI with the red sphere. This process continues until all TOIs are resolved. In the end, the red sphere will move forward, and the light blue and blue spheres will get stopped. I skipped over many nuances and optimizations that Havoc handles when doing continuous physics. I definitely recommend looking at the detailed information provided with the SDK under the Articles section of the Havoc Physics docs. So how does this look in a game context? By now you should all be familiar with the visual debugger from previous videos. I'll be using it in this next segment to show how you can identify performance issues relating to TOIs. Let me open a recording that I made earlier from a modified version of the discrete versus continuous demo. The first thing you might notice in this demo is that there are three different colors of contact points. Green contact points are generated from bodies which are inactive, they've stopped moving. Blue contact points are from bodies which are active but are still only producing discrete contact points. Red contact points are from TOIs. You can see all of these three different types of contact points by selecting them in the list of viewers. You might also notice that there are some numbers which are in red that are appearing above each body in the simulation. These numbers are generated by the TOI counter. This keeps track on a per rigid body basis how many TOIs that rigid body has caused. This helps you track down problematic bodies that are very expensive and causing lots of TOIs. To understand the costs a little bit better, let's skip to a problematic frame and use two other tools that are available to us in the visual debugger. The statistics viewer, which requires a little bit of code setup, as well as the stat graph overlay, which uses the statistics viewer in order to draw a graphical output. In the stat graph overlay, we see a breakdown of the time between steps of the visual debugger. This first half of the stat graph overlay shows our step of the discrete physics simulation over here. It's about 0.8 milliseconds. The second half of the stat graph overlay shows our step of the continuous physics world, which is over here. That's about twice that. The first part of our continuous physics step is the discrete part, and it's also about 0.8 milliseconds. But the last half of our continuous simulation step is TOIs, which nearly doubles that. The stat graph overlay may help us understand the cost of a particular frame of the simulation, but let's say we want to understand the costs over time. To help us track costs over time, let's turn on the perf channel for thread zero. First, let's adjust the range to something that's reasonable. Then, let's select the timers that we care about. Continuous simulation. As you can see, over time, the TOI spikes are definitely a problem, even with numerous optimizations that Havoc does behind the scenes. So how can we make this better? The most important factor in determining if two bodies generate TOIs is their collision quality type. Havoc defines many of these quality types. This slide shows the different collidable quality types that are available inside Havoc. These are named after what Havoc considers to be the type of object you might assign to this quality type. However, the actual quality of the collision depends on the combined quality types of the involved bodies. 
So here's the interaction quality types. PSI, which generates no TOIs. Simplified TOI, this limits TOIs to one per frame and simplifies the response. So there's no reintegrate and recollide. It simply backtracks to the point of actual collision. TOI, which generates TOIs versus dynamic bodies. TOI higher, which will generate higher priority collisions against fixed bodies. TOI force, which is similar to TOI higher, but it has a cannot solve callback if penetration cannot be resolved. Character, which is similar to TOI forced, but has a slightly more accurate contact points which are generated. And then invalid, no contact points generated. So putting the two together, we get a big collision dispatch table like this. You can also find a similar table in the docs. The important thing is to note the way different bodies interact. So for instance, debris versus debris is going to yield no TOIs. Bullet versus debris, however, is going to yield TOIs for dynamic bodies. Fixed versus bullet is going to yield TOIs for against fixed bodies. The reason for TOI against dynamic bodies and TOI higher against fixed bodies is that we always want fixed bodies to win in a situation where a dynamic body might be pushing another dynamic body against the floor. Just because two bodies can create TOIs, it doesn't mean that they necessarily will. We always want to avoid doing work whenever possible. The main goal of TOIs is to avoid bullet through paper. It's not often the case that people require the collision to be exactly precise. To that end, rigid bodies have a property called allowed penetration depth, which can help increase or decrease the number of TOIs created by a body. Allowed penetration depth tells Havoc what is an acceptable penetration depth for a given rigid body. As Havoc tries to find the exact time the bodies hit, it will stop when it gets a TOI with a penetration depth less than the allowed penetration. The allowed penetration depth also serves another critical purpose. In theory, continuous collision detection could produce a scenario where the number of TOI events is unbounded. Take for instance this ball being pinched by two lever arms. Without an allowed penetration depth telling Havoc that it doesn't need to generate TOIs, it would produce unbounded TOI events at the moment the ball is precisely squeezed by both lever arms. You can find more information out about this in the docs. TOIs are relatively expensive, so what can we do to avoid them? You should have learned from previous videos what a collision tolerance is. If you have really small collision tolerances, you will cause bodies to deeply interpenetrate, causing TOIs. You should avoid varying step sizes for many reasons, but one of them is to avoid TOIs. Use a fixed time step or have an upper bound on the step size. Avoid high collidable quality types when possible. Try collidable quality debris simple TOI or debris. In general, it's good to start with a lower quality type and move up to a higher quality type if you see interpenetration that you want to avoid. To avoid generating TOIs when you initially add high quality bodies, use the ease penetration action which will scale the allowed penetration depth over time. If you manage to spawn a ragdoll in such a way that it gets stuck in a landscape, it can rattle around and generate many TOIs. Use the HKA ragdoll penetration util to detect this case and gracefully push out the constrained physics systems. Also, avoid small, allowed penetration depths. A quick search for TOI in the Havoc headers will reveal many other TOI-related parameters. I hope you've learned something about continuous collision detection today, and feel comfortable getting started with continuous collision.